Have any of you out there actually heard of this mouse? This is the Midnight Thread C1. I wouldn't be shocked if many of you don't know about it or never heard about this mouse, as I was the only reviewer that ever covered this mouse, and that was two years ago. And unfortunately now, this project is canceled. The company is working on a new project now, but this one right here is no longer. So why the heck am I talking about it now? Well, I honestly just want to share cool tech with you guys and again, talk about this mouse again as I found it in a closet and look over it together with you guys, just kind of seeing what it is and maybe we can come up with a couple reasons on maybe why it got canceled as well. And when I say canceled, it's not like 2024 canceled. It's just canceled as the creators aren't working on a project anymore. Now we're going to take a look at the majority of stuff I do on my mouse reviews now. The raw measurements, the infrared test, we'll do the sound test, the build quality we're not going to really look at as this is a prototype. But I want to start off with the shape and look at those raw measurements here. So let's go on and take a look at the length of this mouse from the front to the back. There's the length. Here is our grip width right there in that midpoint. You can see the grip width. And now let's get that height from the mid to the sensor right up to the top right there. And you can see those dimensions. Now, if you want to see up at the front, you can see that right there. And then as far as that back fall off of the hump back there. But more importantly, what I want to show you is get you some angles right there. As you can see, it's swooping in. So if you're on this back butt end, you get those measurements right there. So if you look at that compared to the grip width we had before, but also up at the top, you can see it definitely dives in a bit right here. And then as we come back, it gets a bit bigger right on the back end. Now where this is really gonna shine is with the infrared test here, where I'm talking about it's curving in here and you're looking at the dimensions like, okay, this is kind of weird. Like what is it? Like ergo, fingertip, claw, whatever. So I'm gonna put it in here as how I would grip this mouse. And whenever I used it, this is how I held it. And you can see my fingers are going up there and my thumb and pinky are right back there on that flare out, kind of locking right in on the back. And then same with the pinky right there. Everything else is kind of flowing through. So if we pull this underneath the heat signature camera here and let some heat transfer through and see what we get hopefully we get a good signature here so you can see pretty much back there it's resting on and then rolled up to the front now i want to show you without my hand getting in the way you can see right over there coming into that side and then up to this side so you can see primarily it's on the back right there but no it's not palm this is not in the back of my palm right here it's my hand resting on it right up here on my knuckles and it dips off right behind my knuckles again hopefully you can see that right there my knuckles bam and that's where that slope's falling off so the shape of this mouse again it's not an ergo it's not an ambi it's not a fingertip it's kind of that mesh of all of them together. Of course, that always depends on the size of your hands and everything, but again, it was a true mesh. And whenever I used it, I felt myself very confused. Like, okay, do I want to grip it like this? Do I want to put my hand into it? Well, I can't palm it because it flares out on the back right there and kind of falls off. So it's not comfortable in the back. My hand is jabbed me in the back right there. So I caught myself using that kind of, what we say, relaxed claw. I don't even want to call it relaxed claw because again, it's swooping back there and it's just sitting in my hand. And I think that might be the first area where this mouse could have fallen short is the shape is unique, but maybe a little bit unique. There's going to be a handful of people out there and be like, man, that's my dream shape. That's what I need. That's going to fit me perfect. But I think for the majority of us, this can be like, nah, I can't really jive with it. I need something that flows a little bit more. I want that ergo. I want that ambi. I want that smaller one. You kind of know what you want. This is more or less in that enthusiast shape where you have a specific grip or you just want to try something a little bit different. And that goes even further when we start looking at the buttons here. Well, as you see, there are no side buttons over there on those grooves. It's just butter smooth. And then you have your one and two slight grooves up there and more decorative. Doesn't really lock your fingers in by any means. And then your scroll wheel, which is nice and recessed. But let me give you a quick listen to these buttons and then I want to talk about them. So as we just heard with those buttons right there, I mean, they're solid. You got that slight click in there, but it's kind of muted because it goes right down. These buttons bottom out. There's no give. There's no play left to right. There's no mushiness in there. They click and they go down. But yes, they do feel firm, but that's not the switches in there. That's this carbon fiber because, again, it's one complete shell. It's going from up here. It's just sliced right there. So you got that tension up here, and that tension plays into the lower part of the button. So if you were one to 
hold your mouse up here and press there, they are even firmer. The only way to really, for me at least, to press these was if I put my fingers up towards the front where they gave a little bit of give. Towards the back, again, the tension was so darn tight. And of course, the other controversial issue that could have made this mouse fall off is the lack of side buttons. I know there's people out there, again, that won't use side buttons. Say, I don't need side buttons, you know? But for, I think, the majority of us, as we see in the market, every mouse has side buttons, I think that's a big missed opportunity here and would have shied a lot of people away from it. Myself, playing a lot of Destiny, um, the first Descendants now, my goodness, I'm hooked on that. I need side buttons. I do it as my slide or my roll and then my melee on every uh, melee, melee, <laughs> on Call of Duty, Destiny, every single game, that's what I use my side buttons for. My scroll wheel is always my grenade or a ping or something like that. And I felt lost. I was like, wait a second, which key on my keyboard actually does those abilities to Destiny or you know what I mean? So it really messed with my head and threw me off and side buttons I think are an absolute must. Now the next thing I wanna talk about with this mouse is the build quality. And as I said in the beginning, remember, this is a prototype. This mouse never came to market. So we gotta take this with a grain of salt, but I think we can look at a couple things together here and say, okay, maybe there were issues manufacturing with that. Number one, being fully carbon fiber. As you see, it's one shell piece going all the way around, slices up in a button. So you can see, number one, carbon fiber costs money, but making this one complete shell, I'm sure that was a manufacturer nightmare, you know what I mean? So again, and you're talking back in COVID times when stuff started costing more, so I'm sure that played into well here. But again, it feels great in the hand for sure. I think this carbon fiber is awesome. But when you come underneath the mouse, this is where it really starts to fall apart. And I wanna show you right here. So number one, you see the feet, you see the carbon fiber, and it's coming down flush with the mouse. It doesn't curl in like another mouse. I don't know if I have one right here. I got that new Logitech G309. Anyways, every other mouse, again, you got your shell, and then it kind of swoops up a little bit right there. So your feet are down there and your shell's not scraping on the bottom. When you use this one, again, it's just, I mean, you can hear it. That is the side scraping along that. So I think, again, some issues, how would that carbon fiber be able to go up and roll the shell up around to that carbon fiber so it's not sitting flush on there. Any kind of mouse pad, it's just gonna sink in. Now, I'm not gonna pick it apart as far as quality. You can see there's a gap there. There's a massive amount of flex. You can hear it over there. I mean, it's, it's pretty bad. I mean, it is really bad on the bottom, but again, it's a prototype and that's how we got to look at it. But my point here is when we look at the manufacturing of this one complete carbon fiber shell down on the bottom, how could have they come from this prototype into again, rounding that on the bottom to make it usable? Cause again, it's just not usable like that. It'll sink into your mouse pad and just create tension and just scratch and just digs in there. Now, after we looked at the shape and the build and everything of this mouse, I bet you all are curious what the weight is. Well, first off, I'm gonna pull out the dongle on the bottom as you have that little dongle storage since it is a wireless mouse. And then let's slap it on the scale right here. We are getting right at 48 grams. So you're talking 48 grams two years ago with no holes besides on the bottom, which again is an area we think should have been improved. I mean, that would have been game changing back then. And it is perfectly balanced front to back, which is crazy to say, because the back is so much more bulbous than the front. They did a great job with that. But unfortunately, I really can't sit here and talk about performance because I just couldn't use this mouse. The shape I could look past and again, force myself into a specific grip. Okay, I can get down with that to test the product. It tests so many mice that I can really adjust my grip and be perfectly fine. But the lack of side buttons, threw me for a massive loop. But the biggest thing is unusable on the bottom, how it's so flat. I just, I couldn't use it. I was like, okay, this is too much right here. I had to stop using it. So I can't really speak on the performance. So after we compile everything we just looked at with the Midnight Thread C1 mouse, there, there's a couple ways we can take this. It's like, okay, yo, this is cool. Like you're talking two years ago, the innovation, if this would have came out, would have been awesome. But we can also look at the struggles with manufacturing, like, Wow, you were trying a lot here for a small company to really make a splash, maybe too much of a splash and made the struggles a little bit real. You know, I could see that. But also making it so different than the trends or what we're all used to, side buttons, so on and so forth, right? I think that could have been a big fall off. Now, when we talk about price of this, I believe their Kickstarter just started at 99 bucks. 
A hundred bucks for this? Like, yo, that would have been so cool. I would have recommended, yo, just try it out. It's a hundred bucks. The innovation supporting a cool small company. I think that's super cool. Even though it's not a mouse I would recommend as a main or heck, I could even use as a main. This is all, of course, if the issues were fixed, like on the bottom and stuff with the flex and the build, again, rolling that carbon fiber over. But again, I think it's such a cool project. Again, they are working on a new project. And so what they state, let's hope that actually goes through and We'll see what that does.